It makes me like giddy to know that the people who were using our resources for the MCAT are now like starting med school. Technically, if you were using it at the beginning, you're like an M2 or three now. But John just created a video about what the four years of medical school are like. And we've gotten like a bunch of comments and stuff that are like, no, I'm in my first semester of med school, whatever. And like, I just didn't realize that, that y'all are still following this channel. So, and that makes me so excited because I would love to make some videos about medical school and stuff that's like still relevant for you guys. We're never gonna quit the MCAT stuff. Like we have lots of that out there. But I thought it could be fun to do like a little what I wish I would have had in my first semester of med school or what I wish I would have known. Cause I'm all about like lowering the learning curve. Like if I can give you some information that will help you do better and not have to make the mistakes that I did, I'm all for it. If you don't know who I am, I'm Maggie. I'm a fourth year med student. My brother John and I run this MCAT channel and business because we were professional tutors before we started med school, specifically MCAT tutors. And we still like to teach it and we still like to see good people getting into med school and for them to be able to go through the MCAT and kill it and then get into medical school and hopefully kill it there too. So whether you're actually in medical school now or you're planning to start next year or something like that and you're just trying to prepare, I hope that this video is gonna be helpful. I wanna talk a little bit about like some of the things that I learned in my first semester of med school and how the studying style and everything is different from studying for like your undergrad courses because first off like med school the pace is insane everybody knows that the amount of information that you're supposed to learn is insane and it's one of those things where like my dad's a doctor and you know he would probably say that his med school was harder than mine I don't really know I've never asked him but the fact of the matter is back when he was in med school they didn't know what a cytokine was so like there's just like all the information he had to learn plus the a ton more that's what we're now having to learn so i think med school is like incredibly difficult duh not a hot take so for your first semester first off it's going to depend on how your med school is so the med school that i went to the first semester was completely like pass fail and even if you made really good grades, it did not count towards your eligibility for preclinical honors. So like it was truly pass fail. Like it was a good sort of like low stakes place to try out different study methods and stuff like that. And the first few semesters we went through biochem, like anatomy, like cell bio and histology and immunology and microbiology. And it was kind of like we got the fundamentals sort of like, that was actually what that first semester was called was fundamentals. We sort of got the fundamental understanding of those things. And then we went into organ systems based stuff in our second semester of M1. And that went all the way through the rest of M1 and then M2. So it was like we would learn about something like microbiology, but then every single organ system we would learn, okay, what is the microbiome that affects the respiratory system versus the GI system versus the renal, whatever. But in the first semester, it was those fundamental classes. So if your med school's not set up like that, then this video, like, I hope it's still relevant, but I, I don't have like specifics to tell you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. The first semester's all about like figuring out how you study best and getting used to the pace. Granted, it still felt very like high stakes for me. Like I still really wanted to perform well. I was not okay with just like trying out tons of different study methods. Like I wanted, I was like, I'm gonna stick to like, I don't care if I'm up all night studying. Like I want to do well on these classes because I want that to carry through once I actually get into organ modules. The way that I typically did things was that I would watch all the lectures. I'm, I'm one of those people that like I have to I have to, if there is information that is supposed to be given straight like to me for a reason, like I have to ingest it. It doesn't matter if it's like not high yield for me. Like once I got into medical school, I was like, I will be learning this. So I would watch all the lectures. Some schools, you don't have an option. You have to go in person, but that was not my school. My school had a bunch of like pre-recorded lectures or not pre-recorded, but like you could watch some sort of like remote or whatever. Like they would, they would do the lecture in person, but they would also record it and upload it like an hour later. So I would always watch those. I'd watch them on, you know, 1.5 or two times speed or whatever. I did do Anki pretty religiously for M1 year and then I abandoned it as an M2 because it just got to be too much. So I like looking back now that I'm an M4, like I don't know any more about cardio than I do about you know, endocrine. And like for cardio, I was doing Anki and then for endocrine, I wasn't. So like take that for what it's worth. It felt like a big divide, like people who do Anki and then people who don't. The real answer is probably somewhere in the middle. Like there was probably like things that I should have 
been viewing on a more regular basis, maybe the high yield stuff or maybe little facts that I had trouble remembering or probably what I should have done was I should have incorporated like practice questions earlier and things that I was getting practice questions wrong on, that's what I should have put on an Anki card and done those. So I guess like as far as Anki goes, something that I wish I would have known is that it is eventually going to be impossible to keep up with them all. Like you're not going to be able to do all of On King and keep it up all the way until step one. And it's also probably not necessary. So in my opinion, you should kind of pick and choose like which Anki cards that you do. Now, whether this be, so On King, if you're in medical school, then you know that the On King deck is like very, it's like tagged really well. So like if you get a UWorld question wrong, you can look up the UWorld ID and oftentimes there will be cards that have specifically been tagged because they are talking about that fact that was being tested in that you world question or you could do like if you're doing boards and beyond or pathoma which are like high yield resources sort of sort of like our high yield e-course but for um, medical school you can go and unsuspend like those specific videos i'm sorry if it feels like i'm like bouncing around a lot of different places i'm like actually sort of remembering what i was doing back in the day like as i'm making this video so yes i i i'll talk about this in a minute but like i chose boards and beyond that was going to be like my you know place where i was going to get my material outside of lectures but we also had anki decks that were passed down from people in the class above me like they had gone through lectures and made anki cards for them so i was trying to juggle those with like my boards and beyond Anki cards and I was doing like both for a little bit. You might be in a similar situation. So there might be like a student in a class before you that made Anki cards. In my opinion, for my med school, we had in-house exams that were made by the lecturers, the professors or whatever, and they were focused on that. And then at the end of the block, we would have an MBME style exam. And so that was more like high yield stuff that you'll see more about on like boards and beyond or pathoma. Whereas for the in-house exams, it was more like the things that were talked about in the in-house lectures. So the lectures that my medical school was actually giving me. They both ended up counting towards my grade. So like I wanted to do well on both of them. But at the end of the day, I do kind of wish that I'd focused more on NBME style stuff because the lecturers at your medical school are probably like they'll bring in like some MDs and stuff to give you lectures about certain stuff. But a lot of them are like PhDs who have like a very specific niche that they like to talk about or that they research or whatever that may or may not be relevant for like your, not only your MBME style exam at the end of your block, but also for like clinical, like once you get into third year, like stuff like probably doesn't matter. So maybe what you want to do is if you have the option to do both in-house cards and like on king cards based on boards and beyond or pathoma. Maybe you do them all for the block. And then once you're finished with that block, suspend the in-house stuff. Just do like, if you wanna keep doing them block after block, just do like the boards and beyond or the pathoma or the on king cards. And if you guys want like more information about like what I mean when I say on king and how they're tagged and stuff like that, like I can try to make, I can make John make a video cause I'm not so good at on key. Like I was, I was barely good enough to use it, much less like talk you guys through it, but <laughs> we can make a video on it and I can, I can kind of talk about how they're tagged and like what all those different resources are. The second thing I wish I would have known is that you do not need every single resource that's out there. One of the reasons me and John have not made any step materials is because there are so many step one materials out there. So I've been mentioning some of them already, Boards and Beyond, Pathoma, Sketchy, first aid i guess you world still kind of i think it's relevant i think i did you world and boss all of them there's a ton of step one materials and that's because step one used to be the one that was scored and it was more important for residency apps whatever a little bit about them so i would say boards and beyond and pathoma are pretty much the same pathoma is based on the book i don't think that boards and beyond is based on the book but they're both made by doctors who talk through different topics in medicine in like a video format. You don't need both, you just pick one of them, but I would definitely get one of them. John did Pathoma, I did Boards and Beyond. We both scored really well on step two, it's fine. Pick whichever one's cheaper, honestly. In your first semester of medical school, I know at least for Boards and Beyond, cause that's what I have experience with and 
Also, I'm pretty sure for Pathoma too. They will have at least something in there for those fundamental blocks. So for like, they'll have stuff in there for immunology and microbiology and cell bio and biochem and stuff like that. They have videos in there for that. They're a little bit more ex like expansive and better when once you get into your actual organ modules, but you can still use them for this first semester of fundamental knowledge. So the way I did it was that I would watch the in-house lectures and then I would also go and watch my boards and beyond videos especially like I would not watch every single one of them but especially if there was a topic that I was a little confused on or I felt like there was just a lot of material and I wasn't sure which of it was like high yield or how they were going to test it I would go do a boards, boards and beyond video for it as far as the other resources go first aid is a book it is I believe written by like medical students in the past maybe some like doctors or like residents or whatever, but it's kind of like written by peers for peers. And I had first aid and honestly, I think it was a waste of money in my opinion. A lot of people liked to use it. There's a couple like things in there that are useful for like mnemonics, but overall I felt like Boards and Beyond had the same material and it was in a video format, which I do much better with a video format. Like I just don't learn that well from books. I'm just too like ADHD to read a book. So first aid is like plus minus. Sketchy is a very unique resource. I can talk more about these in a different video if you want as well. Sketchy are these like cartoon sketches. They're supposed to like create memory palaces for you and sort of like use different characters or props or things like that to help you recall certain things about a topic that is like so vague that's such a bad explanation of sketchy but if you see a video like one sketchy video then you'll understand a lot of people have like you either love sketchy or you hate sketchy i loved it i thought that it was really really useful for understanding or for like memorizing microbiology because so much of it is like memorization like i can't remember if this bug is like coagulase negative or positive i can't remember if it's gram negative or positive you know like those things like it was so helpful for that and it was so helpful for drugs. Memorizing things about drugs is so important for medical school and a lot of it is just memorization. Like there's no conceptual understanding to why vancomycin treats XYZ or the names of the beta lactams. Like, you know, I mean, it's just so much of med school is memorization. And so to me, Sketchy was really good at creating those memory palaces. And I even think back, I'm, I'm literally a fourth year med student. I think about these things on rounds. Like people will talk about, oh, we need to, we we're talking about it the other day. I'm, I'm in the ICU right now and we were talking about pressors and which are blood, which are uh, medicines that help people's blood pressure to stay up when they're in like shock or something like that. And they have a lot of hypotension. Um, you can put them on pressors to help keep their blood pressure up so that they keep perfusing their, you know, organs. And like, I literally brought it up. I was like, oh my God, do y'all remember the sketchy about like the sympathomimetics in which some of those were pressers. And that's, I guess that's all I'll say about that. I loved sketchy, but you can watch a couple videos and decide whether you love it or hate it because it's kind of expensive. So like find a friend who already has it and, and likes it or whatever, and then watch a couple of videos on their computer. And then you can decide whether or not you think it's a good resource for you. I loved it. The last thing I'll say, cause I feared that this video is getting a little too long already. I obviously got too excited is that these professors that are giving you lectures are so intelligent, but they do not always know what is high yield. Some professors will say that it's very important that you know this like specific, like, cytokine or protein xyz and it's like mm, maybe maybe not maybe it's probably very important for them in their field of study but plus minus on whether it's important for a medical student to know that so if they say it it is fair game for the in-house tests and technically it's fair game for the mbme style tests as well but at the same time if you are drowning in information and you do not know what to prioritize for your like end of block mbme style tests or for step one, go with the things that are on Boards and Beyond or Sketchy or Pathoma. Those are going to be more high yield every single time. Oh, and I wanted to say one more thing about the resources. I feel like there's this big like, there's Amboss people and then there's UWorld people. Those are both like question banks. And then Amboss also has like some clinical stuff. I guess you all kind of does too. I don't know. I think that Amboss was pretty good for like step one style stuff. 
but in my opinion, I always liked UWorld better. My school gave us Amboss for free, so a lot of people were like diehard Amboss people. And even though I got it for free, I literally still bought UWorld. I just liked it better. I thought it was way more clinically relevant, which is not important really when you're a first and second year. Like hands down, it, a UWorld is better for third year. But when you're in your first two years, they're probably a toss up if your school gives you one of them for free you can use that. To me, Amboss would test a lot more like low yield stuff and it would not give quite as good of explanations. But they're both pretty solid. So to, to, to summarize what I just rambled about for so long, I talked about Anki. So I talked about whether or not you wanna do Anki, whether or not you should do in-house cards made by your peers, made by people in the classes above you, or whether you should do Anking cards. And I guess to summarize, I did a little bit of both. They eventually got to where I could not do Anki at all anymore. Like I just had way too much. I spent like the summer between my M1 and M2 year, I was not adding any new information at all. All I was doing literally for like the whole month and a half was like catching up on the things that I had let slide. In, in the second semester of M1. Like, and then once I got into neuro in M2, it was like, t like I could not do it, it was too much. It was causing me to fall behind on other things that I wanted to do to increase my scores, like to do questions and stuff like that, or go to review sessions. Like I was prioritizing Anki over that, and th that's not the way it should be. Like your practice questions and your reviews are gonna be way more high yield than your Anki cards. So that's what I would do. I would just do like the things that are high yield for you. Definitely suspend any in-house cards at the end of your block, things like that. The next thing is you don't need every single resource. So pick either Boards and Beyond or Pathoma plus or minus on sketchy, plus or minus on first aid, whether or not you like to read, and then pick UWorld or Amboss. What I did was Boards and Beyond, sketchy, I did not do first aid, and I did UWorld. What John did was Pathoma. I don't remember if he was a sketchy guy or not. I think he may have been like a sketchy person, but not for everything. Like he would just watch a few. I think he did more of first aid than I did, and I think he did UWorld as well. But one of my good friends who got junior AOA, which means like she's like top eight people in her class, she's literally a genius, she is a diehard boss. So like you can make any of this stuff work is what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying don't waste your money on getting all of it. And then the last point is that your professors do not always know what's high yield or what's testable or what is gonna be on step one. They know some things, especially if they're like heavily in med ed. Some of those people are literally like MBME question writers. So like trust those people. But if they bring in some random like surgeon, love surgeons, my dad's a surgeon, my brother's a surgeon, uh, but sometimes they focus on different things than what is important for like MME style questions. So just keep that in mind if, they, if you feel like the lecturer has gone way off, off track and you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta learn all this new stuff. Like you might not, that stuff may be completely like not relevant for you, totally relevant for them and their people not relevant for you. I have so much more to tell you guys about medical school, but I'm gonna cut this video off because it's getting too long. I'm so excited for everyone who's starting there in one year. It is so, so hard, but so rewarding to finally be learning what you want to learn. You do not have to, you can forget, you can forget Ohm's law. You can forget magnetism. Like it's such a good feeling. And even when it feels like things aren't as clinically relevant, you know, like you're learning some random enzyme and you're like, I really just want to know like how to diagnose and treat this disease or whatever. I totally understand you, but like, like you're in it, you know, and you're going to get to learn how to, you're going to get your stethoscope. You're going to get to learn how to interview patients and do a physical exam. And you're probably going to get to go in the hospital for at least a little bit and actually get some patient care, like hands on. And that stuff's so exciting and I can talk more about that too. Anyway, y'all are all gonna kill it. Let me know if you like this video, if you wanna see more stuff like this, cause I'd love to talk about it more. But if you're just taking a break from MCAT studying and watching this video, then just know we'll be back on the MCAT stuff. I've got another video for like application season coming out next. So I'll see you guys then, bye.